This conference will now be recorded. Fine, yes, we'll get started. Okay. So um, there were a couple of questions um, sent uh, to me. Uh, I thought it will be common for everyone. So probably first few minutes, I'll go over the uh, questions and then we'll get started with the session. Okay. Um, let me go one by one. Um, let me take the questions. Okay, um, one of the question was, um, um, is there a way I can um, write the um, error messages or uh, some of the correlated values into the log files into the text file so that um, once the test is over, I would be able to go and look into it. See, uh, typical um, use cases for this is um, um, you complete your um, in your script, right, you might uh, capture certain values, um, say order IDs, um, or your, um, uh, if you have your registration as part of your script, you might print the user IDs or um, email IDs. So some of, some of these values, we might have to go and look into it after the test is completed. Um, for maybe for your uh, validations um, uh, or for your uh, reference uh, the reason could be anything but the objective is to write or print certain um, um, values into a text file uh, that is the question is it possible or not yes uh, it is possible um, uh, directly uh, in cases there is no option to go and handle files but uh, there are workarounds available. There are additional um, uh, libraries. You have to rebuild your K6 itself. I'll, I'll explain you that when we go into the that particular section. Okay, the answer is yes, but by out of box, K6 don't support it. We might have to um, rebuild K6 uh, to enable that file handling option which I will cover it as part of the uh, sessions. Okay. Uh, second, uh, similar question. Um, is there a log file options available? Um, whatever uh, you're going to have it in the console log. I'll show what is console log anyway today. Um, whatever you're getting printed, like uh, your um, uh, action started, this function started, this is the response code. This is the error message. This is the correlation. Everything when you the replay log, right? If you are familiar with the load runner, we call it as a replay log. Yes, in K6, um, there is an option uh, to um, to write all this console into a log file, which I will also show it to you. Cover it as part of the execution and results. And one more question was: Is it possible to? do the scalability or uh, step up kind of a scenarios okay see uh, normally um, uh, maybe whoever have been doing performance testing uh, all of you might know uh, we do a ramp up of say for 20 minutes you ramp up the users and then for next one hour two hour or three hour the test will be running in a with the same set of users we call it as a steady state and then um, uh, once the steady state is completed, we will do a ramp down, right? Um, uh, in some cases, you may have to probably um, uh, do the scalability or step up. For the first 30 minutes, I will have 100 users. And next 30 minutes, I'll increase it to 200 and then to 300 and then uh, uh, to for maybe 500 right so this is more about a scalability test to understand where your application is going to have a problem um, so if that is the question uh, yes it is possible um, using uh, k6 there 
there are various set of scenarios uh, available uh, which you can use it to simulate these kind of a uh, load as well okay so answer is yes it is doable i'll, I'll also tell you how to do it while doing the execution related sections um next question is uh, can i import the result to a pdf or excel um you can you can export the result to html that there is an option which i was telling you yesterday um so this is a typical uh k6 html report will look like okay um if you can see here it, it will have your uh, transaction names and then the um uh, past failures and the request metrics um and then your custom metrics so i'll don't worry I, all these things i'll tell you how to um, feed in this data but html report yes it is um, available pdf i don't think there is an out of box option for pdf excel sheet you can um root your uh, file out your data to a csv but it's kind of a raw right it's uh, it'll have a raw data which you might not be able to um use it from a reporting perspective okay so the options are uh, one is the html okay our uh, html report second is um i was mentioning about this uh, inflex and grafana right so you can very well use that as also your uh, option this this grafana dashboard what i am showing it is showing virtual users request per second failures per second and then nine of the uh, latency so the data is not there because we haven't done any execution um, but this this kind of a dashboards also you will be able to use it from an analysis or reporting or monitoring perspective but uh, pdf i don't i don't think there is an out of box option available for generating a pdf report and also your um, csv is not that um, um, good enough for you to do the analysis case it's will it help me in client side profiling will it help me in client side profiling okay there are two two things okay i'm not sure whether i have confused you yesterday there are two things one is the client side measurement okay so when i say client side measurement let me take some time on on this so i go and open my any site um for example um okay this uh, e-commerce site okay and then i open my developer tool okay and i go to network tab okay and i'm going to hit ecommerce.test.k6.io okay any site okay and Your then screen is uh, not you can see here oh is it okay i'm sorry i thought i shared it one second good that you told thank you i was showing the html report when I mean, uh, uh, there was no nobody was um yeah uh, told anything anyway let me then quickly go back and show you that report um, i'm sorry i didn't know it it was not shared this is the html report i was mentioning this html report will be available okay and then um csv uh, is available but it it will be junk it's not a junk but raw data okay so we will use both um, your html report uh, or grafana dashboard which was um, I'll, I'll go to the grafana as well yeah this is grafana right the grafana is not having a data because we haven't done any test uh, recently so it is not having any data um right so these are the options available from a reporting perspective okay fine now coming back to the client side profiling versus client side metrics um so when when we talk about client side metrics right uh, i launched the web page and what i look into is the your um load time if you see the bottom of the page uh, right hand side bottom right you see something called load 3.97 or dom content loader 3.63 um keep um and then page size number of request these things comes out in as part of the metrics okay and uh, when you wanted to measure 
um, your end user experience this load time is what you will measure that is a client side measurement or your end user measurement client side profiling is uh, to uh, to see how we can improve your performance of your web page okay there you will go and look into whether the javascripts are minified whether the compression is applied whether the caching is implemented or not um, whether um, your images are properly compressed or not there are a lot of things you will look into it when, when it comes to profiling what we are trying to do with the case it is client side measurement end user experience measurement okay for example if i go and show you that report okay uh, if you come down this custom the metrics we see here you will see lot of metrics client side metrics right browser loaded first paint first meaningful paint uh, and then dom content loaded all the metrics which you will see in your in your developer tool is what you will try to automate it using case okay so i don't know why this is coming yeah so um, to answer your question with case six you will not do client side profiling or engineering you will be able to measure your end user response time or client side metrics client side measurement is what you will do it using case six uh, you don't need to go and do it manually every time open the developer to look into it measure it not possible not a uh, um, good option whereas with case six you will get all these metrics um, how to get it all these things i will anyway teach you later but to answer your question is um, it is not client side profiling it is client side measurement okay and there is another question um, uh, feasibility of integrating k6 with jenkins uh, like any modern tool um, one of the important um, uh, option or important uh, capability is uh, to execute these things in a pipeline uh, in Jenkins kind of a tool, right? Instead of you running a, a test uh, manually every time, um, your project team will have a pipeline where uh, code code commit will happen and then build build uh, build creation will happen, build deployment will happen. And then functional testing, some smoke testing, some security testing, and then your performance testing. Which means K6 or JMeter or Load Runner, you should be able to execute those in the Jenkins. So yes, K6, um, you will be able to execute K6 uh, from uh, Jenkins for sure. Okay, so absolutely, that's a feasibility. Okay. Uh, final question. I am new to performance testing. Uh, will this course help me? Um, see, if you have been working in other domains, uh, functional automation or other other testing, or you are new to performance testing, um, see, you have to start somewhere, right? From a tool perspective, you have to start somewhere. You have to start with Load Runner or JMeter or K6. If you don't have a specific requirement, say, you, if you are not going to work in any project immediately where jmeter is going to be there or load runner is going to be there if at all there is an immediate requirement where you're going to work for jmeter or load runner then obviously you have to go and learn that particular tool if there's no uh, specific requirement and you're just trying to learn performance testing so that you can get into projects then um, k6 is not a bad tool uh, definitely since you're new you can start anywhere you can start with jmeter you can start as load runner or you can start with k6 i mean it's 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 one uh, everybody's uh, uh, personal choice okay so if you are new to performance testing there are two things you have to learn one performance testing concepts right what is performance testing what are the non functional requirements um, uh, so there are a lot of things you might have to learn learn as a separate track and then comes your tool part right so this will help you from a tool perspective but uh, from more from the performance testing concepts you may have to probably uh, um, uh, look for some other material or uh, look for some other um, uh, way of uh, getting those experience okay so it depends answer is it depends uh, if you don't have any specific objective if you're new to performance testing uh, you need to pick any tool as as to get started so um, there is nothing wrong in learning the uh, k6 okay 
yeah those are the questions which i have got um, from few of you where i have also answered them directly in the whatsapp uh, but um, i just wanted to those are common questions so i thought um, uh, i'll i'll, I'll uh, read out these questions along with the answers okay perfect so now um, yeah we'll spend some time today uh, not not lot of time because uh, still people are um, uh, registering um, some of joined uh, those who have registered have joined today some not joined so we'll not go bang uh, today probably from tomorrow we'll will uh, go uh, into a complete session so today what we'll do is um, i'll we'll start with the components right uh, what are the components that you would uh, you you would require to be uh, installed so let me go to the drive my drive so once you're registered right you will get access to the um, the google drive yeah this one here once you get access to the google drive go to the software okay in the software to begin with uh, download the k6 download the vs code two things you it is required okay um k6 uh, this is just an msi installer so you just uh, uh, double click 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 it will get installed okay same way vs code also uh, no magic no complexity just execute the vs code you will get the um, visual store uh, studio code as well get get installed okay so once you install these two tools okay that is a minimum prerequisite you should have it in your mission third as i was mentioning you yesterday go to the um, app.k6.io okay um, you just need to as i was mentioning you just need to do a single site if you have already have a google account you just do registration with your google okay that's it and uh, no nothing else required okay you all set up then go and create hello, a new Satish. test hello sir yeah Please, you did not drop the link to the Google Drive. I cannot see the link to the Google Drive. Sorry, sorry. Come again. You said that uh, the applications, like the files, are in your Google Drive, and I didn't see the. I have not seen the link to the Google Drive. So you are saying you you, are, you you did not get the access to the drive. Is what you are saying? You said we should download the files from your google drive but you have not shared the link to the drive okay 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 um okay just uh, send me your email id send me your email id i will provide you the access okay okay yeah uh send me uh, your email id in in into my whatsapp i'll i'll add you add your email id to the drive okay i'll do it right away after the uh, this this uh, session Okay. All right. All right. I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, you download these two things and then install it. And uh, third is register it in app.k6.io. Okay. And you can go and create a new project. Okay. And once you create a, just a new project name, just a sample name, and uh, no other, uh, nothing else you would require. Right? Just go click new project, and then um just create it okay then you, you go and create your new test okay when you go and do a new test okay um there are two options available for you to go and start doing the scripting okay i was mentioning you uh two two mode of scripting right one is for your uh, microservices rest apis where it is all get methods, post method, put method. You will refer to the swagger or you will get that uh, postman collections or the request response from your developer. So um, you can go and build it on your own, right? There's no recording required. You will go and build that using this test builder. Okay. You also, you can go and uh, do a uh, build your script here. Or if you if you wanted to go and um, um, do the recording, okay. Um, if you click this, there are a couple of options will be available. One, 
uh, the bottom one if you see right you have to, you can go and add manually the steps this is what we will do it for your microservices whereas um, for your um, let me go back if you want to go and record it you'll use the recording a scenario option okay uh, so which means um, even though if you are not going to um, use app dot uh, k6 cloud for executing it you can definitely use this portal for constructing your script you can use it as an additional editor okay you will use visual code but on top of that you will get help from your k6 ui k6 uh, web portal for starting your scripting okay for example right i'll go and manually do a get call let me open my swagger i'm just going to quickly walk you through how this setup is going to work how an handshake between your um, k6 cloud and visual code is going to work from a scripting perspective from a component perspective okay let, uh, let me go and take the swagger okay this one okay so in the swagger i'll just take a very simple example of get call get slash pet slash pet id so this is going to provide me the, um, the pet details we going to provide a pet id right get get pet id so i'll just try this out i'm going to give say 100 and then execute it okay so what i get is the um, 200 response body 200 is a response code and i get a response body here and there is a request url okay and then um, i could able to see the headers okay uh, so this is a sample get call uh, in my requirement document which i will use it for my scripting okay so what i'll do is i'll just go and copy this url this is my url right this is my get call url I will go to the app.k6. I'm going to say um, get pet is my, I, I just name as request. The request name is get get pet. And then is it a get or post or put? Is it, is, it, is it a get? And then I'll go and paste this. Okay. And then um, the headers. Okay. Um, I'll go and say, accept uh, let me go and see what is the header there header is only one header is there accept application slash xml so i'll say accept and then drop down application slash xml okay done if there are multiple headers you can just keep adding those header whatever you see it here you can add this header right yeah and then nothing else is required uh, maybe for example if you want to do a check um, validation right i can just go and say um we'll go and we will we'll do it in detail anyway i'm just uh, giving you the just an overview of how the setup is going to work i'll say i need a um, http code validation um equals to 200 my http code has to be has to be 200 that, that is a normal validation that we keep it for any services right it should the http score should be 200 okay now this is how i go and create my script in the ui Okay, provide my request name, give the um, your request URL, headers, validations, all these things you give it uh, in the UI. You don't, you will, you are not going to do any coding at all, right? You just configuring it. Then, if you go and toggle this uh, in the top and top right, right? There's a builder. If you go and toggle it, automatically script is getting generated. This is the case script okay so if you come down um you will have you will have the endpoint right http.get headers and then validation okay don't worry what is what we will go over in detail okay so basically your scripting will have some import and then it will have some details about where to run this test your load generators and the scenarios like um what is the number of users duration ramp ups and then comes your actual uh, action 
right so a, a typical um, uh, a case script will have all these things now what you will do now you have a reference script created right uh, you haven't done any coding at all you haven't done any lines of code at all right you are, you are using the app.case6 to build you the script now copy the script copy it now you go to the your um, visual uh, studio and there you can go and create a new file say i'll say get uh, pet store id dot js okay i'm going to yeah now i'll paste it okay so in the visual studio code uh, once you first time you install it right what you need to do is go to the um extension okay go open the uh, extension in the left hand side you will have this okay extensions there you go and search for k6 okay and then go and install these add on okay uh, k6 for visual studio okay go and install it uh, just uh, you need to run it some command will be there first time uh, go in the extension type k6 you will get this option and then you uh, there's a uninstall option is there for me because it is installed otherwise you would click and install okay so this k6 extension will be required for you for for visual code to um, uh, compile it and then show the compilation errors or for example if something is uh, missing right uh, it will automatically it will it will say yes there is some problem with this right so for all these debugging purpose and and then for a compilation you would need this k6 for visual studio um, add on extension okay install the extension once your visual studio is installed and you open it for the first thing okay now i copied my script and i'll just go and remove few things because i'm not going to run this uh, script in the load generators that is available in um, your cloud right so i'll just go and remove few things which is not required for me okay and target is 20 user no i don't need 20 user i'll just need one user for our uh, just to run run few things right i'm not going to uh, do any loading so i just say one and then say three seconds two seconds so it will just run for one minute or even 30 seconds okay and then three seconds and then three seconds Okay, don't worry about all this configuration i'll explain it in detail uh, i just want to sh show you how the handshake is going to work how we are going to use the cloud for creating your script and then copying that uh, sc script into your uh, local visual studio code and then yeah that's it i'm just save it the top section has some import don't worry what are those i'll explain you later and then it has the uh, user duration and then the actual get call execution right so now i saved it and i'm going to run this the command to run is k6 run simple the command line to execute k6 in your local is k6 followed by run and give the path where you are save that script okay run it okay um it is saying uh, it is running one user four complete five complete okay so it will it will go and execute as per the time you mentioned okay so one of the validation once you install k6 and once you have installed these add-on and then uh, in the visual studio you copy the script from the app and then 
um you need to run this i'll just cancel it let it run anyway okay uh, to make sure that whether your case successfully installed properly in your mission okay when you run this sample script anything any sample thing right don't even worry about the swagger or pet store you go to your app.k6.io and then go to the create new test and then don't worry about all these um, uh, pet store thing there's something called start scripting the second one script editor okay for you to do just do a very quick validation go to start scripting okay it will provide you a very simple url you no need to do anything at all okay this script you can copy it okay this script you copy it okay and then paste it here remove the uh, just remove this um, what is that this load impact this this alone you remove it okay because we don't want this to get executed in somewhere in the cloud no we don't want right this alone you remove it and then just execute it so this will uh, this will tell you that yes ksx is installed properly in your mission yes it is running my script for you to um, validate whether ksx is running properly or in your mission copy the script paste it here and then do a ksx run ksx run your script file Okay, so this is how you do a handshake between you. You construct your script in the you uh, in the app dot k six, okay, and then um, generate the script, and then copy the script, and then execute it in the your local. Okay, uh, yeah, there are much more than that is what you will do it, but this is the initial validation uh, for the the bare minimum prerequisite right even for you to learn it um, as part of the sessions in your laptop install visual code install uh, the add-ons install k6 um, in the app.k6.io uh, just generate a very simple script copy it paste it here remove the load generator configuration and then execute using k6 run it should run okay so once it is done the, you will see this response if you see the law console you will see that uh, it is executed that uh, there's a um, uh, status equal 200 and then uh, uh, there are a lot of the things are getting printed if you see all this message yes you are good if there is a response saying k6 is not recognized or there's some other problem then some installation is not done properly if you get that those problem it is still good because we we might miss missed out something maybe not installation is not done properly uh, if you go and search uh, in the google about with the error message right if you get an error message saying something is not working or something is not uh, set properly we will find the answer if you want, when you install it if you find any such error send it to the group um, we will figure it out what is the problem so don't be surprised if you get up the issue while running it for the first time always it happens with any software okay yeah um so yeah i'll i'll pass it here yeah i don't want to go in detail again as i said um we will probably go in full throttle um, probably from tomorrow um any any question guys um um any any question on the um the course content or schedule or anything else feel free to ask it here um yeah please put it in the message or you can probably watch it over as well so so far i haven't seen any um, specific java scripting need um is there any need for the, you know the uh -huh. actually no javascript or is this what you do because i saw that you're doing the builder right from the builder you just toggle and then it automatically gener generates the javascript um true but um uh, for example let me go and open um uh, some other script okay it's not every time the builder is going to give you any, everything okay for example i want to in our e-commerce site uh, right i was showing you this site here my requirement is to probably go and pick these products randomly every time every iteration you might need to probably pick a different product so those kind of a logic you might have to say i i, I would have used some of the random functions uh, and then um, uh, 
some validations for that i think you would still need uh, to go and code it uh, but all these things are going to be uh, kind of a template right uh, you're not going to use thousands of varieties 10 15 20 combinations um, so which means once you know what to use you will continue to use it always so if you ask me if you really need to know javascript to work on a6 no you can definitely manage it if you already know javascript it is always good if you don't know javascript it is still fine see nobody knows java to use jmeter nobody use c to use load runner same way k6 you will write some functions but those functions are always going to be something kind of a reference template to read csv to read json to write json um, or um, to write into a log file there are a set of uh, uh, um, uh, functions set of um, lines of code you always going to use it so uh, yeah uh, you you would be able to manage but it's not always going to be like straightforward what i told you do something in the builder you execute it yes it will work but for you to bring additional logic uh, to bring in some kind of a randomness in your way you're going to pass the data then at all you would you would end up writing some javascript uh, on your own uh, definitely okay thank you yeah okay fine guys if you still have any questions like yesterday you can st you can definitely drop a message to me I will try to answer you directly and also we'll discuss that in the call and anything related to the payments or um, uh, payment related questions you can definitely reach out to the uh, uh, Kumar sir and he will be able to help you out okay fine guys I'll look for you forward for your questions um, and uh, uh, offline okay and we'll, we'll meet you tomorrow yeah thank you